Hello and welcome to this video of assigning IP addresses to your uh, cluster nodes. Uh, so this is by recommendation. Um, one of the uh, uh, on one of the other videos, uh, I think it was the VMware install UPI video. Um, someone made a comment that uh, they'd like to see how to assign IP addresses. So that's what we're going to demo in this install. However, just today I reinstalled this cluster. Uh, I like a nice clean environment to get started when I do new tests. And I've already done that, uh, so I did this the old process, um, which was uh, which is documented in the uh, uh, VMware UPI install guidelines. So these are all booted up by DHCP. Um, so essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a third worker node here. We're going to call it Worker Two, and I'm going to manually assign the IP address instead of doing a DHCP assignment. Now, um, the process is exactly the same as you would use for assigning the IPs of your master, bootstrap, and everything else. Uh, so I, I don't really need to rebuild the whole thing just to demo this one feature. So let me go ahead and, and we'll clone a new image. We'll assign the IP address, and then um, uh, we'll see it boot up, join the cluster, and uh, we'll be good to go. Okay, so first things first, make sure the, the node that you're adding is in DNS, uh, which is the same requirement for DHCP. So I need to make sure uh, worker two is in DNS. I've already done that. We can just, you know, ping uh, worker two. You can see the IP address there. It's, it's not active. Um, uh, so it can, it can resolve the name. All right, so we'll start with cloning. We'll grab this and we'll say uh, clone virtual machine. And then I'll give it name, worker two. And there, and we'll put it on node four. And that's fine. Yep, all right. We'll customize the hardware. And sure, we'll uh, power on the machine once it's done. This is a worker node. I'm gonna give it 848, uh, hard disk 250. Uh, because I might do virtualization again, I'm going to go ahead and enable the uh, CPU extensions. And then under network is where we would typically assign the uh, MAC address. We're not going to do that here. Uh, under VM options, we'll go to advanced. Uh, we add our config data here. So there's three lines, which is typical. And then we're going to add a fourth. The fourth is going to be our uh, new uh, entry we're going to put in. So this is the config data for the worker node. We'll put that in. Uh, this is, uh, you've probably already seen all this. This is the coding type. We'll put that in. And the UID, put that in. And so this is true. This is base 64. Uh, you get Got to get my uh, encoded value for the worker node. Grab that, put that here. All right, and then uh, this value, this is one we're going to use to set our IP address. And if we go back to the documentation, I'll put a link to this in the description below. You'll see an example here about how to set the static IP address. And they say to export this and then do this or this here, here's an example and do you don't have to do any of that so just grab this value here which is guest info afterburn uh, whatever that is uh, network arguments so grab that and put that in the other value and then here we're going to need to create that value that we're going to assign and essentially what this is is the ip address so over here we'll just do uh, 172.1 oh wait sorry IP equals 172.16.1.22. Uh, there's two colons followed by the gateway, 172.16.1.1. Uh, whoops, one colon followed by the net mask, uh, which is, do, 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 uh, what is it? Um, 255.255.255.192. And then uh, host name, so colon and say worker two. Uh, colon uh, interface you can skip it it'll take the default interface which is created and then none and then name server let me move this page over there so you can see that name server and then whatever the name server value is so mine's 172.16.101 so I'm going to grab this 
value, copy. Again, that's right here, so it shows you an example, the IP address, uh, two colons, uh, I have two colons, uh, the gateway, that mask. Uh, they're not using a host name, so you can skip that value. Um, they're not defining an uh, interface, so you can skip that value. They've also added none, and then they put in a name server. It looks like you can have multiple name servers if you need to, so that's good. The uh, I think there's another uh, value. Uh, I'll have to go back and check. I'll, I'll put a link to it if there's if more information is needed here. All right, so we can grab that, copy that out. We'll put that in here. All right, and okay. And so we should be all set up. Next, next, finish. All right, so that's going to clone out that worker node. Cancel that. And once that worker's cloned, it should start up. Um, and then once it starts, uh, I'll wait for it to, uh, to boot. And then I'll be right back and we can finish the process. All right, so we see the uh, nodes booting up now. Took a couple seconds. Um, and then it, uh, Started to come up, so we've got our host name, our IP address assignment, and we should be able to go over here and we'll just wait for um, the CSR to show up. So watch, uh, OC get CSR prep pending. And as soon as this is finished, uh, we'll add it to our cluster and we'll be good to go. So it's loaded everything and it's rebooting now. Uh, when it comes back up, it should uh, submit a CSR so we can sign it and join it to the cluster. All right, so the node's up. I'll go ahead and close this window up. See, we see our CSR is uh, being requested. And we'll see you get CSR. And it'll make one more request. There we go. All right, we'll wait for it to join the cluster, which shouldn't take too long. All right, so here we go. It took about two minutes. Um, so now we have uh, our node uh, joined to the cluster using a static IP assignment. And again, um, doing a clean install of your entire uh, cluster, you could just do, do the same thing. So you'll clone you know, your um, CoreOS image to a master node. And then instead of us you know, later on going in and assigning <clears throat> a MAC address, just add the variable to the uh, to the advanced options uh, for the VM configs. And then when they boot up, they'll grab their uh, static IP address. Hope this helps everybody. Um, thanks again for the recommendation. And uh, until next time, thanks.